Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rec Fusion Live controller. It is a two unit controller that can also sit pretty nicely on a desk because it has a perfect tilt and a low profile. So when you put it on your table, it's it's home just as well there as it is in your rack. Very, very flexible. And you see how we made a, a really nice, con nice construction here. So those cables that needs to go into the controller will easily do so no matter where you mount it. This is a fantastic controller. It's a combination of the PDC Fly and the LiveFly controller, which can be purchased separately. But here in a compact form factor that goes right into your flyaway kit. We think it's a really exciting controller and we have worked with customers to develop it to um, have exactly the features that's necessary on productions like the ones that you may be on if you're watching this video. And um, since I have already walked through in, in, in other videos the LiveFly and the PDC Fly interface, I wanna um, maybe address a few other concerns, but still to just enjoy this control, let's take a look at it uh, in, in detail. So uh, we'll just zoom in and look at some of these sections before we, we go on in particular to how the PDC section is working. The switcher section of the Rec Fusion Live is hooked up with an ATEM switcher. This is our reference installation. So any anytime we basically show anything that can switch, you will uh, see it hooked up with an ATEM switcher. We also have um, the uh, auto and the cut button. We have the fader here. We have uh, buttons up here for setting uh, sources on auxiliary one up to six. Uh, let's just take auxiliary four so you can see these are four way buttons. So as I press the edge of the button, you see that sources are going up and down in the auxiliary four list. And that's that's um, basically how four way buttons work and how flexible they are. So we also have the media player and for the media player, you can see that uh, these encoders will allow me to change the media stills in uh, media player one, media stills in uh, player two. Uh, these LED bars, multi-level LED bars, are hooked up as uh, confidence monitoring for the um, audio input on input one up to six. So if I go to the audio, you can see that, yes, that's what we have. We have actually audio on camera two. I'm now turning that down, but now I'm turning it all the way up and we can see it's peaking. So that's really, really useful. Those LED bars, they are so cool with um, three RGB LEDs inside. We can uh, use them to signal many different useful things like VU metering or just steps of some sort or just be a, a tally lamp uh, with a solid color or uh, whatever you want to do with them. Now, if we move on to the ME section, in the ME section, we have, of course, we have the slider here. So we have a, a nice, um, this is just for coolness, really. Uh, okay, so it's, yeah, it's always cool. Yeah, uh, then we have auto, we have cut, we have fade to black, yes, and uh, fade to black off. We have uh, shift key, and uh, if I hold down the shift key, then I would uh, normally access uh, additional sources and so on. Uh, up here, I have uh, two user keys that you can assign to anything. In this case, they are assigned to uh, put fill sources onto upstream keyer one and downstream keyer one. If we move on to the PTC section, we have a camera selector and some settings available right here. Now, um, so uh, these settings are just some that I picked. I could, uh, for instance, use the user keys over here as a menu so that as I uh, use these as four-way buttons, toggle forth and back, then it would uh, go forth and back between settings in uh, or banks of settings on these encoders. But right now I've just hard-coded them to brightness, contrast, saturation, and gamma mode on the attached camera. So you can see that these settings, they are in fact um, uh, per camera. So I have two cameras recognized right now. So camera one has these settings and um, camera two has these settings. Camera one, camera two, gamma mode for camera one, camera two, and so on. Now, uh, I don't have camera three, four, and five. So if I press those, these will just uh, disable themselves. But then I have this button, which is in fact the shift key. So when I press the shift key here, I uh, get to presets, but the presets are empty because I am um, not, uh, I haven't selected a, a camera. So if I go back to camera one or camera two, you'll see that I have presets available for those cameras. And if I press these buttons, I will uh, see my cameras uh, going to those presets like this. And then I can see the camera going to that preset. If we just zoom out here, you can see I en enable the presets and the camera is moving to that particular preset as I want to do. 
Okay. So that's the Rec Fusion Live. Uh, I think you can put all the pieces together and then you know what this controller does. Um, but I couldn't help myself bringing a little extra hardware like an AJ Kumo router, because for instance, if you want this to um, bring up sources on a, uh, a, a screen, a preview screen for the operator of the PTC side, which of course would be the same guy who operates the uh, ME side, um, you still may want to use a video router to do that. And that's absolutely no problem. I also want to show you something else, which is cool about the presets, because you can label the presets, which is really useful. So if you just look closely again at the controller, we have presets labeled one, two, three, four, and five. Not very helpful if you um, if if you are not really good at remembering that preset five is so and so. So what I want to do is to uh, just put in the the USB uh, plug here, so I can get into my uh, configuration mode easily. Uh, so we'll just attach it here. Okay, I open the serial monitor, type web config, I get an IP address out, I go to this IP address with a web browser, okay? And there we go. So in this web browser, I can now go to the bottom of the page, or, or maybe I could look at how these buttons are configured at first. Uh, so if I take the five buttons used for presets and camera selection and look at the configuration, you can see in the preset side, uh, on the preset state, it is recalling a preset and it is specified to take a label from something called preset times camera. Mm. So just remember that. And over in the other side here, in the normal state, we are using it as a camera selector. And this is why I wanted to add uh, routing on an AJ Kumo router. So I'm just going to bring that up, route input to output. So let's say it's output number eight that we want to use for our preview monitor. Then um, it will take input number one and route to that output. I could also do that for an uh, ATEM auxiliary. So if I, if, if I want, that would even be more easy because it's in the top of the list. So let's say I use auxiliary five for a preview for the camera operator. No problem. It's just the same story. You add this action, but now in this case, we don't. So um, I'm now going to insert this down here and then change this um, so that I, I can quickly build up my camera selector here again, uh, which, which is now a combination of camera selection and also routing of that particular input on the preview monitor. Okay, so that's done. I now want to type in the labels for my presets. So I go to the bottom of the page and here we have a um, section for labels where I can enter a number of rows and columns. So I enter two rows because I have two cameras tonight and then I enter five columns because I have five, five presets in this case. So presets could be something that would remind me what these are go to. And I would typically use um, a name like total for the first preset, which is like a total um, of what the camera sees. And then for the first camera, we could assume that it's um, working with uh, a band then uh, the bass player, the drums, the uh, singer. The other camera could be for audience. It could be for the director. It could be. Uh, I'm I'm out of ideas. Uh, thing one and uh, thing two. Okay, so I save this. And uh, this is really useful. If you if you look here, it's it's pretty powerful to see how I'm now at camera one, and I go to the presets, and now I'm gonna save this back in my configuration interface. And you see, as it is saved, it is instantly updated on the controller. This is really really cool. And then if I go over to camera number two, you'll see that it's the different set of labels, the ones that we entered for camera number two in the second row. Just see this again, camera number one. I go to presets, I get the labels for the first row. I go back to camera number two, I see the presets and those labels are different. Now, another thing is that I now uh, route sources on my Kumo router. So let's just bring up the interface for the Kumo router right here. Uh, I'll just reload and make sure that we actually see what is on destination number eight. So I select camera number one and yes, you see it is going to camera number one, camera number two, Camera number three, four, and five. Yes, really, really powerful. There you see an integrated controller. This is really honoring all the device cores and the work we have put into that so that you can combine an ATEM switcher, a uh, Lumens camera, along with an AJ Kumo router. Seamlessly integrated in such a small 
two rack unit uh, controller for your flyaway kit. I think that's just amazing. Let's get this.